the body from God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. We also pray for the soul of our brother, Martin Luluga, whom you have called to yourself. Grant this to Christ our Lord, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. the same act 
with which you took vengeance on our foes. You made us glorious by calling us to you. A reading from the book of wisdom. That night had been for God. That night had been foretold to our ancestors so that once they saw what kind of God they had put their trust in, they would joyfully take courage. This was the expectation of your people, the saving of the virtuous and the ruin of their enemies. For by the same act with which you took vengeance on our foes, you made us glorious by calling us to you. The devout children of worthy men offered sacrifice in secret, and this divine pact they strike with one accord, that the saints would share the same blessings and dangers alike. And both with the and both with they had begun to chant the hymns of the fathers. This is the word of the Lord. Happy are the people the Lord has cho chosen as his own. Bring out your joy to the Lord, all oh, you just, for praise is fitting for the loyal hearts. They are happy whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his own. Happy are the people the Lord has chosen as his own. The Lord looks on those who revere him, on those who hope in his love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. Happy are the people the Lord has chosen as his own. Our soul is waiting for the Lord. The Lord is our help and our shield. May our love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. Happy are the people the Lord has chosen as his own. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Abraham looked forward to a city founded, designed and built by God. Only faith can guarantee the blessings that we hope for, or prove the existence of the realities that at present remain unseen. It was for faith that our ancestors were commanded. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed the call to set out for a country that was the inheritance given to him and his descendants. And that he set out without knowing where he was going. By faith, he arrived as a foreigner in the promised land and lived there as if in a strange country, with Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him 
of that same promise. They lived there in tents, where he looked forward to a city founded, designed, and built by God. It was equally by faith that Sarah, in spite of being past the age, was made able to conceive because she believed that he was, he believed that he who had made the promise would be fulfilled to it. Because of this, there came from one man and one who was already as good as dead himself, more descendants that could be counted as many as the stars of heaven or the grains of sun on the seashore. All these died in faith before receiving any of the things that had been promised. But they saw them in the far distance and welcomed them, recognizing that they were only strangers and nomads on earth. People who use such terms about themselves make it quite plain that they are in search of their real homeland. They can hardly have, they can hardly have meant the country they came from since they had the opportunity to go back to it. But in fact, they were longing for a better homeland, their heavenly homeland. That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God, since he has founded the city for them. It was by faith that Abraham went put to the test, offered up Isaac. He offered to sacrifice his only son, even though the promises had been made to him and he had been told. It was through Isaac that your name would be carried on. He was confident that God had the power even to raise the dead, and so figuratively speaking, he was given back Isaac from the dead. This is the word of the Lord.
Jesus said to his disciples, There is no need to be afraid, little flock, for it has pleased your Father to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give arms. Get yourselves passes that do not wear out. That will not fail you. In heaven, where no thief can reach, where no thief can reach it, no moth destroy it. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. See that you are dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like men waiting for their master to return from the wedding feast, ready to open the door as soon as he comes and knocks. Happy those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. I tell you, solemnly he will put on an apron, sit them down at table and wait on them. It may be in the second word he comes, or in the third, but the happy those servants if he finds them ready. You may be quite sure of this, that if the householder had known at what hour the burglar would come, he would not have let anyone break through the wall of his house. You too must be ready because the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Peter said, Lord, do you mean this parable for us or for everyone? The Lord replied, What sort of steward then is faithful and wise enough for the master to place him over his household to give them their allowance of food at the proper time. Happy that servant, if his master's arrival finds him at this employment. I tell you truly, he will place him over everything he owns. But as for the servant who says to himself, my master is taking his time coming and sets about beating the men servants and the maids and eating and drinking and getting drunk. His master will come on a day he does not expect and at an hour he does not know. The master will cut him off and send him to the same fate as the unfaithful. The servant who knows what his master wants but has not even started to carry out those wishes will receive very many strokes of the lash. The one who did not know but deserves to be beaten for what he has done will receive fewer strokes. When a man has had a great deal given him, a great deal will be demanded of him. When a man has had a great deal given him on trust, even more will be expected of him. This is the gospel of the Lord.
of Bulu, the bigger province that we all belong to. This uh, uh, life that we're celebrating, we're celebrating because he taught us the way to the book to God. He, 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 he consecrated or ordained priests that are serving already within the, the, the bigger province. For example, when he was transferred from Bulu to Levi, I was the first priest in the <laughs> There, and uh, uh, Bishop uh, uh, John Baptist, or remember the Archbishop today, had already been removed from us. He left us as deacons. So we were wondering what was going to happen to us. So when, Martin, when, when Bishop Martin arrived, he didn't change any program. He went very properly fast and fixed days. And because I was coming from the cathedral parish, he said we shall start from here. So that was how I got to be the first to be ordained by him because I was coming from here. Bishop Martin was a very good father and left an example of a very gentle person who would take it easy, go slow with, the, with taking decisions that could be perhaps very crushing. That was because of his experience also in this ministry. He served as a, long, as a bishop for a long time because he has been in different capacities and he had served in Guru already a long time by the time he was coming to Delhi. Now, our gathering today is not about focusing on analyzing him. I don't know whether you have noticed the coincidence that has happened here. The readings of today, they sound like readings suitable for a funeral, isn't it? Yeah. Just like the Lord is talking to us about be prepared, stand ready, light stand for action. And this is not because we chose it for this purpose. We didn't even know what the readings was going to be when this day was decided. We looked at it and it is talking about exactly the context we are celebrating here. That we need to be ready. And now this context is not being given for Bishop Martin. It is being given for us who are listening here. The first reading, for example, taken from the Book of Wisdom. The Lord is giving, the, the, the author of this book is giving us this awareness. By the same action that God actually punishes our enemies, He saves us, He gives us the opportunity. So God's action can be this double-edged thing. Then it, the other side, it is a punishment. This side, it is salvation. You saw the story of how, for example, the Egyptians, the Israelites left Egypt. The light was there. The other side is a, is a pillar that is creating darkness. This side is the light. This is how God's action can be. We can't, we, because God is capable of using the same event with double purpose. In the, in the second reading, this is now um, uh, the, 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 the reflection, the letter to the Hebrews. It is Paul, contested of the ship. It is Paul here talking about, talking about the actions of Abraham. What endeared, what, what made Abraham closer to God? was faith. Faith. Remember that the Abraham we talk about here with a lot of praise did not know even the Ten Commandments. You are aware. Because the Ten Commandments came later. Abraham did not hear anything about Prophet Isaiah. He did not hear anything about Jesus. Abraham was just connecting to God out of intuition. You know this, this instinct where you just want to be obedient to a, super, a supernatural force. So if his obedience was based on actually very little information, what about us? That's why in the gospel today, the Lord in his conclusion is saying, when more has been given, more is expected of you. When more is given to you, actually on trust, even what is expected is more. Because it was in trust. Do we have, are we a generation that, that you know, more is given? Indeed we are. And I will tell you why. We are a generation that have got no excuses as far as being close to God is concerned. Abraham struggled to know even what God wanted because there was nobody to tell him anything. But he still connected to God out of faith. God promised him that he's going to make him a very rich man, you know, and actually give, give him a lot of land, give him you know, descendants, as many as the, 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 the ones, the, the sand of the shore of the sea. And what was happening in his life? Abraham his only wife that, you know, was the wife he was taking for the promise, was not able to produce children. And God carried him, taking his taking short time. Then he would come again and repeat that, you know, I'm going to give you a lot. You know, you will be successful with everything. <laughs> Abraham is still believing. If it were you and me, baby, by this time, he keep saying, you know what? I'm tired. Because he was already silent when this thing started. By the time the child was being born, Abraham was 90. Now this, this, 
this patient is extraordinary. Now, in this, in this, in this kind of difference in time, you would have lost your patience if it was another person. And now, in all this, you see that you carry your living. God was buying time. Sarah became now a childbearing age. Then now, she had failed to produce children at the time when she was a girl. Now, this man comes and says, you are now going to produce a son next year. She was 60 already. Then now you are telling her, at the age of 60, now you will produce a child. I failed to produce at the age of 30 or 40. Now I can produce at 60. <laughs> That's the joke. But out of faith, she lived. And I will have time with you on what God is promising. And God made it clear, this is the child of the what? Of, of, the, of the promise. The one I'm telling you, that will give you descendants. Plenty. Cha Sarah died with one child like this. And that was plenty. Now this plenty here is about your faith. Do you really believe that you will be, will be having a lot of descendants? Abraham decided to believe. If it was another person, you would say, ah, one like this. And you're telling me there will be many. Like the son of the, the, show, the, the son at the seashore, you're wasting my time. Because his own time was running out also. But Abraham decided to believe. Then God later on came, when this boy was about 30 years. This, 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 this uh, Isaac here. A young boy, the only hope of the father. Then Abraham was told by, by God, you know what? I want you to offer this child to me as a bad sacrifice. You know, just not, not, not this thing you are doing that I offer my child to you when you are still holding the child to you. you I offer this thing. <laughs> I'm talking about chopping for a bad sacrifice on the altar. This is what God wanted. And this was happening already at the time in this history. The remember that in the ancient world, human sacrifice was real and they would really burn children and give burn the ones they give in God as sacrifice. And they were watching the were pagan gods. Now this one here, this God is, is, is checking on Abraham's quality of faith, using this kind of difficult request that you, you burn this child here as sacrifice to me. Abraham thought this was impossible now. My only son, and remember at this point, he had just, he was made by the same God to chase this child, Ishmael, with the, the, with the mother. The slave girl walked out there. This is the only one now left, and this is the one God is now appearing to tell and say, you, you offer this in sacrifice. Abraham thought this was impossible. How could we do this? He decided to trust in God. That God can actually bring out of nothing. Can, you know, can create out of nothing. We'll give this child back, you know, we'll, we'll actually give you this thing that God will do the impossible. He told you plenty of the children will come through this boy. Now today he has changed his mind, he's saying, you burn this one. You're still burning, hoping that the children will come out of where? You see the kind of stuff. And that is the faith we're talking about. Incredible. Abraham went ahead with this, with this program of going to burn Isaac. Isaac did not know. And because now the, the human problem came. Do I tell my wife that the arrangement is still? hours as a sacrifice to God to make that God happy. Abraham feared to tell her. Because if you tell her she will be all over the place. She cannot understand what God is connected to her. Yeah. So Abraham decided not to tell her. And even the boy himself, Abraham decided not to tell the boy. So he simply told her, we are going to pray. Now today when you go to Jerusalem, you will see the structure like that looks the rock of the dome, you know, it is a golden structure with a curve. They look like the, the top of these Muslim structures, you know, these round covered things. It is painted golden. That, that, that dome of the rock is, uh, is the place, the old warrior, where Abraham actually attempted the sacrifice of Isaac. So he let, he let these guys, these workers, with, with things, you know, things to for the burning, what, what, what. And they traveled all the way to the current day Jerusalem. At this point, Jerusalem was not yet there. It came later. <laughs> so it was pushed, and that is the place they call him Moria. Now, this man came to offer sacrifice. He, he, he saw the place now where he decided, I'm going to offer my son from there. And then they, he told the workers, You stop here. You stop here. Because he does, not want to, he does not want them to see what he's about to do. <laughs> you stop here. Then, my boy and myself, we shall go to pray to our God. For you, you stop here. These guys left their rubbish. And then he started thinking what he needed. Firewood. He put on Isaac. Then he was carrying the flint. You know this 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 piece of wood with fire on it. Uh -huh. Then he was carrying the knife. They started walking. Now Isaac was carrying these things. And then he, 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 he thought, what the sacrifice? He, because he was not told. Then he said, Daddy, we have forgotten something. Where is the land of the sacrifice? <laughs> 
not know what the Ram is <laughs> Somebody says, ah, don't worry. God himself will provide the Ram. This is this encouraging small boy. And the boy carried it. Three trust in that God will provide the Ram. Reaching there, then he started behaving strangely. All of a sudden, now he's tired. He quickly, because he does not want to think. It is so hard to kill your own son. He was trying to quickly, but I, 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 there are no rescuers because these boys, these other workers, were so very far. You know, they're not even seeing what, what is happening here. Then now he left the boy with ch the chest open. He's now striking before he thinks anything or before he feels any emotions. That was when God shouted, "Don't kill the boy! Now I know you fear God." And then he grabbed his son back to his chief with a lot of joy because everything has now changed again. His son was supposed to leave. And then all of a sudden, he saw a certain ram. The way things happen, a ram that, uh, you know, the, 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 in, 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 in Palestine, the, the rams, the rams, maybe, the, this ones here, the kind of ones that go like this, like this. And, and so you wonder why, but I was, the, if they are very, very small, these ones go like this, like this. Then the thing was entangled in the thorny bush. Because the ones were going like this, it was struggling to release itself. And then Abraham noticed the bush shaking. In the, in the big ram, I don't know from where. <laughs> if you are if you appear there, then the angel say, There. That is the one now you will offer in place of your son. Because I know you are you fear God and you will do everything for God. <laughs> so Isaac survived. And Isaac gave back to other children, you know, later on in his life. But you know what, what is very really unique is the faith of this guy here is being used to remind us. You check the faith of this man. Who was not spoken to? Who, who did not receive any message from the prophets because less was given to him? The faith of this man, who did not have the chance to hear any single word from the mouth of Jesus because less was given to him. Compare that man with yourself. Who has got the women? You have got everything. You have got everything. If you don't want you to commit sin, it is not because we do not know we are committing sin. We just suspend arrangement with God for a while and then bring this thing <laughs> and then we come back to confess. This is how we are committing sins. Nobody will be involved in stealing because he's not sure whether this is theft or not theft. <laughs> you just know you're stealing, but you go ahead and say, let me finish this one first, but then I'm sorry. <laughs> no, this is the kind of stuff. This is a very, very, very superficial way of doing things. You know, the arrangement with our, in our body is a very big one. That's what the Lord is saying here. It is more has been given to us. Your four parents, to give another example, did not have access to it, to the Bible. They wanted to hear God's word. But somebody else, they did not have any 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 of the past any of the prayers. You have the Bible. Are you reading? You see the problem? Your four, your four parents did not have the education to actually read the Bible if it was given to them. You have the education to, to read the Bible because now it is also it, it, it is given to you. Are you reading? Nothing. Your forefathers did not know Latin because this thing came in Latin originally. The thing has been translated into Rubara, Alu, and everything. Are you reading? Nothing. Your forefathers would have this thing available only in the parish somewhere very far. You have to walk miles. The thing is not available now in the parish alone. It is on your phone. <laughs> Are you <laughs> You see that I'm And now, you know, you, 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 you will find our appetite is, is, about, is about something else. We have got people who are interested in reading, but not, not the Bible. The Bible will remain. The thickness of the Bible is about that. Somebody will come with appetite to read novel. <laughs> now, the novel, the thickness is very big for those who are people in literature. Very massive thing like this. He borrows from the library. In three days, the thing is finished. You must read like what? You know that kind of stuff. Now, the novel has been leveled clearly. This one is fiction. <laughs> fiction means it did not happen. It means you are reading somebody's imagination. And you are aware that you are reading imagination. Now you make a fiction this thing and you return it to the library from where you borrowed it in three days. The Bible is truth. Word of life, you are even aware this is word of life. But let it stay in the shelf there. <laughs> that is the problem. So you may find that we have got a very strange arrangement in terms of our appetite for God's word. God's word does not bother us. If it was something else, we would have the energy. What's the energy people have got in church? In fact, you will sit in church. In fact, the priest will be talking, or you will be reading. You will actually be not, you are there, but also not there. This kind of arrangement. 
You are here, but also not there. Why am I saying you are there, but also not there? When was the first meeting taken from? We were all here. Do you remember? It has gone for many. If it is still there, maybe because I've been repeating some things also. Then, where was the second meeting taken from? It was read right here. It is gone. And that's the now. Now, where was the gospel taken from? Nothing. It was here. We were not even to stand up for it, hoping that now you will be fully alert. This did not even help. We stood for nothing. And I was the, the person who was reading, Father Anthony was saying, the Lord be with you. And he said to be with those in the spirit. We are hoping that communication is going on. Who when you are doing something? <laughs> We are not doing what we are supposed to be doing. This other person who is in the protection of Abraham did not have access to this. He did not meet any of the prophets. He didn't hear what they had to say. He didn't hear what Jesus had to say, but was so close to God. For us, we have everything. In fact, things have become so convenient that if Bible study is not a problem anymore. Because now, if you want to say now, where do we find this text? Jesus, you know, to change water into wine in Ghana. Where do we find the sex? Why are you disturbing yourself? It is on your phone. Ask your phone. Jesus has seen water into wine. Enter. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing will come. It will chapter this, verse this, verse that. And the story is there. So you don't even need to struggle with opening the book. Pa, 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 pa. Away is Jesus has seen water into wine. No, you don't need that anymore. But would you put that in order to find where Jesus